Hi everybody, and welcome to another session of Virtual Drop-In Drawing. In this art making program, we're bringing the Met to you with a series of drawing exercises meant to challenge and grow your creative skills. My name is Anne Meisinger, and I'm an assistant educator for public programs and creative practice at the Met. I'm usually behind the scenes for our virtual drop-in drawing program, but I'm excited to be here today to talk about making postcards to send to family and friends. In making a postcard and popping it in the mailbox, you're really making a small scale work of art and sending it to somebody. Mail art or correspondence art as it's sometimes called has been a popular contemporary art movement since the 1960s when artists started mailing inscribed or handmade postcards, packages and other correspondence as a part of their artistic practice. One work in the Met collection that's a perfect example of this is a work by the artist Ankuara called I Got Up, which you can find linked to in the program description for this video. The postcards that Kuara, a Japanese conceptual artist, mailed to friends and colleagues, stamped with the time he got up each day, are fantastic examples of this sometimes very personal and intimate method of working. Today, we're gonna to work from a postcard made in 1905 for our small scale work of art. This postcard titled, A California Anomaly, Snow and Oranges, Pasadena, California, number 7,782, was published by the Detroit Publishing Company in 1905. Like many postcards we're familiar with, this postcard measures about three inches by five inches, and it features a California landscape in a very particular composition. In the center of the image, furthest into the background of the picture is a snow-capped mountain. Given the reference to Pasadena, California, which is near Los Angeles, the mountain featured here could be in the San Gabriel Mountains. Below the mountain and much closer to the viewer's perspective is a row of indistinct green trees. The trees reach up into the midsection of the mountain, interrupting the view of the mountain's foothills. One step closer to the viewer in the foreground of the image are some low, green trees that run in kind of a row. These trees, which also don't have a lot of detail, but I think they make up the orange grove that the viewer is probably standing in, they run from the lower right-hand corner of the postcard about one-third of the way to the left of the postcard. Finally, we have a close-up of an orange tree with ripe oranges. The pairing of the snow-capped mountain and the ripe oranges make me think this is probably a winter scene, but one that would be quite different from what many people think a winter landscape might look like. The close-up of the orange tree here takes up the full one-third left-hand portion of the postcard and runs fully from the top to the bottom, and the oranges are surrounded by these lush green leaves. In contrast to the deep greens of the foliage and the light blue of the sky and the rest of the postcard, the oranges hanging in clusters from the tree branches are a bright, vibrant orange. And they have a really lovely shadow to them, as if the sunlight were shining directly from the upper right-hand corner of the postcard. One of the many things that I love about this particular postcard is that its original owner wrote a message on it. On the back, it says, Dear sister, will you bring me something when you come home? I wish I could see you. Right, Martha. I love imagining who Martha was and who her sister who received the card was. Every time I read this, read this message from 1905, I'm struck by the words, I wish I could see you. There are so many people in my life I wish I could see now, all across the country. And while I wait until I feel more comfortable traveling, I'm gonna let everybody know how much I care about them and I miss them and how much I love them. And I send these postcards. There are a lot of ways you could make your small scale mailable work of art today. You could make an abstract drawing like the one that I have here. Um, you can maybe even take an old postcard 
and collage it or write a poem. Uh, the important thing when you think about your postcard is choosing the right material. You want to choose something that is strong, that could take the force of the mailing process, or you could consider putting it in an envelope and mailing it uh, with the stamp on the outside of the envelope. That'll give it a little bit more security as it goes through the mail system. The last thing that you're going to need, make sure you have on hand, are some stamps. I have a couple of kinds of stamps here. Um, I have these beautiful Ruth Asala stamps and some fruit and vegetable stamps, both of which I ordered online from the post office. You can buy your stamps in person or order them online. Um, they'll get to you pretty quick either way. So once you've got all of your materials gathered, um, we can go ahead and get started making our postcards. Okay. Now we're ready to make our postcards. First, I'm going to gather my materials. Um, the first thing that we're going to need is a piece of paper. Um, and this is that kind of thicker paper. This is watercolor paper, which I talked about. Hear that thickness in it. I think this is going to work really, really well for my postcard. If you don't have watercolor paper, um, you can look around your house, and I bet that there is something that works for that kind of thickness. This I found in a pile of mail. Um, it may have even come in a package of postcards that I purchased. And it's just about the right size and shape. Um, it is this kind of brown color, so if I were gonna use this, I would wanna just make sure to have some pretty dark lines or maybe even use pen to make it really stand out from this darker color on the back side. So now we've got our paper. Other materials we're going to need are pencils. I have these graphite pencils at home, and if I didn't have these, a nice number two pencil would work really well too. This mechanical pencil I just had laying around. Whichever pencil you use, you're going to need an eraser. Um, and um, I'm adding in a pen here because I'm going to put in a border. I think that looks really nice. You'll want some scissors to cut your larger piece of paper down, a straight edge, um, for uh, marking out the larger piece of paper, and finally, some stamps. Um, I've got everything gathered, go ahead and get started. Beginning with our larger sheet of paper, you can see that I've already divided this sheet into a quadrant, um, and this piece of paper very conveniently measures 12 inches by nine inches, which is gonna make four postcards that are each four and a half inches by six inches. And so I've just drawn out this quadrant in, in equal measures along the paper. And, um, and then you can cut that into four separate pieces if you're breaking down a larger piece of paper. I have already cut uh, a postcard size piece of paper out and so I am ready to get started. Um, in getting started, I am going to use some lighter lines to lay down the major parts of the postcard. Um, the major parts here are the oranges, I think the tree branches, the larger tree branches of the orange tree are pretty big parts and I think to the the orchard um, on the right side of the page is going to really center everything else. So that's what I'm going to work on first. Before I do that though, I'm going to draw a border around the edge. I think a border looks really nice and it gives you some space to work in. And I'm just going to freehand that. Um, I don't feel like I need my uh, ruler especially and so I'm um, just going to draw and leave, I would say, about a quarter inch of space all around. Um, and it doesn't have to be even. It's not even on the postcard that we're working from. And so I feel fine about that. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, now that we've got our border, I'm going to start with the oranges because I think that those oranges um, provide a good anchor for drawing from. So the first orange that I see is about halfway down. 
and I'm just gonna sketch out very lightly a circle for that orange. And then I'm noticing that there is an orange um, below and to the right of it. And actually there's three oranges there. Um, so I'm gonna draw all three of those. And I'm gonna keep in mind, I'm trying to make them about the same size, but if they're not the same size, that's fine. Um, there's no need for this to be perfect at all. And I'm noticing too that there are a couple of oranges that are hiding in back of the first oranges that you can see. And I'm just gonna sketch those in lightly so I can come back to those later. Great, I'm really happy with those oranges. All right, there are three branches that are kind of sticking out um, further away from the tree. And those are gonna show us, they're gonna guide us as to where the edge of this very close up orange tree is. There's our three branches. And I think actually this one's maybe a little lower down than I sketched it out. Um, but we'll see, you can always move that. If it's not in the right spot, once you fill in the rest of the details, we can relocate it. All right, and from there, I'm gonna just sketch in the orange tree that is next closest. And I'm gonna use some really sketchy lines because I wanna remember that this is a pretty textured part. That orange tree has a lot of uh, distinct but indefinite texture to it. So I'm gonna stick that in with my line there. Another part of this that I like a lot is this small path in the orange grove. And so I'm gonna get that path in the orange grove and that's very furthest in the foreground. I'm not quite sure if I've left enough room for it, but again, I can go back and change it. And then next closest is this row of orange trees in the grove. And the row starts out a little bit larger here in the corner. And as we work into the midground, it gets smaller and meets up with our path. So just sketch in that bottom line. We've got a little perspective here. So the orange trees in our grove start out larger and they get smaller as you move into the distance. I'm gonna play with these a little bit because a little indistinct, but there is the basic outline of our orange grove. And now I am going to move to the mountain in the distance. Um, now that I've sketched the orange grove that is right here, if I sketch the mountain that's in the distance, that's gonna give me a good idea of where our midground needs to go. So the mountain in the distance, I'm noticing that the mountain starts behind that orange tree that's closest to us, and it has a gradual rise, and the peak of this mountain comes really close to the top of the postcard of the border there. And it's not quite a triangle, it's got kind of a flatter top and then it comes down and it has a lower flank here and then a smaller peak over to the edge. Great, there is our mountain. And uh, now I'm gonna draw in the tree line. And the tree line starts pretty close to this middle branch here. So I'm gonna use that as a guide. Um, it's gonna be really helpful in drawing in the tree line. And right away I've noticed that I don't love where this part of the orange tree is coming down. So I'm gonna adjust that. And when you're drawing like this, you can just always adjust as you go. All right, relocated that. I'm gonna move my tree line in here now in the tree line comes down and it is also very indistinct 
The tree line does have some textures in it. So I'm gonna to try to preserve those textures. Um, you can always come back and put in more shading. For me, I think this tree line is a pretty uniform texture um, and color. If you're gonna be working in color later, there is some variation in color in the postcard, but I found that it is just a little bit easier to to put in the, the one color and have that signify the kind of lar darker trees that are in the distance. But what we do have here are two distinctly taller trees. So I'm gonna get those in right away and they do have a pretty specific shape. So here's this one. And the second tree. And as I'm drawing, I'm noticing my treetops are a little closer to the top of the mountain line, which is not quite the same as in the picture, but I'm okay with it. Um, I don't think that makes a significant difference. And I actually even kind of like it. Um, but I do want this tree to be a little shorter. Maybe even a little bit shorter than that. All right, and now because I made that tree shorter, I'm gonna make this part of the tree line a little bit shorter. I'm gonna make this a little further down. And as I'm revising, I am making my lines even just a little bit darker, a little more definite. I'm making more final decisions as I'm revising my sketch here. Great, now we are at a really wonderful place where we have the mountain line. We've got in the background, we've got our tree line in the midground. We've got an orange grove here in the foreground. And now we're ready to work on this orange tree here, which is pretty close up. So what I see in the postcard is some shapes that I recognize as leaves in the shape of ovals. And sometimes they're really organized, like here. Um, these leaf shapes are very, very organized. They're definitely in order as you would imagine them on a tree. Um, very easy to sketch and to, to understand that we've got a tree here. And as I said, it kind of cuts over our tree line, comes into an intersection with the orange grove that is just behind. Um, there are other places in this drawing where the tree is much less organized. So up here in the corner, there's kind of a, I don't know, I wanna say a star shape of leaves that we're gonna, I'm gonna sketch out. Um, but the tree, as you get away from these tree branches here and here, the leaves get much less organized and much less definite, uh, which I kind of think is pretty fun. Um, so as I draw in my tree leaves, I'm gonna pay attention to what is very clear, what is very definite, and and in the shape of a, a, a branch, a very recognizable branch, like this one that I'm drawing right now. And what is less definite, like these leaves down here below our first bunch of oranges. And here we've got another definite branch here. And I am not being completely faithful to what is in the postcard that we're drawing from, um, but I'm just trying to get the sense of what that postcard shows and how it shows it, um, and really just trying to learn from the composition and think about foreground, background, and the organization of shapes. Um, and down here you'll notice we don't so much have leaves as we do general darkening of the area down here. 
And that's because the tree that we're working from is getting even less distinct. The leaves go from sort of less organized to less distinct. So I continue putting in some leaves. And as I put in the leaves, I'm gonna sketch in these orange shapes a little bit more in definition. And in general, as you're working across your drawing, you want to work on all of the same parts at the same time. So don't give so much attention to the orange grove or the oranges before you move on to give other parts the same amount of attention. It's going to give your final drawing a nice even look. Um, and it'll help you to, to just really organize everything. Um, I'm going to continue putting in leaves. There's massive leaves up here. Makes me wonder how close up this person was to this orange tree. One of the things that I really, really love about this postcard is the way that color and shadow are reflected in it. Um, it it's printed, it's a printed piece, it's not someone drew it, but I wonder if it was, you know, a sort of collage of images or if it was based on a photograph. Lots of things to think about. Get our oranges in here. Okay. So now that we have our leaf shapes and our background, foreground, I'm oh, sorry, background, midground, foreground time to start really giving things some definite shape and texture. Um, one, we'll start here with the mountain and I'm actually going to switch pencils to something a little bit darker. If you're just using your number two pencil, you can get the same effect just by pressing harder. So come in with my mountain. I'm going to flatten the top a little bit. I made it a little more round than it actually is. And come through here. And I'm also going to put in the foothills now. Um, the foothills here are quite a bit darker than the mountain. I think that they have less snow on them. Um, it's a slightly a winter scene. I think in the summer, this mountain probably doesn't have so much snow and oranges ripen in the winter. So, and I'm just gonna shade in the foothills here. And as I'm shading in the foothills, I'm gonna make these trees, which are part of the tree line, just a little bit darker. And I'm also going to look at these darker spots on the flank of the mountain. And you can see where the tree line is almost to the top of the mountain. And there are these triangular shapes um, which show where the snow kind of runs, runs in these paths that don't have any trees in them. And I'm hoping that that will give me kind of more texture to the top of the mountain. And it'll give the effect that the mountain is really in the distance there. Um, and it's not completely even. We've got a little bit of a shadow up here and one here. And I would really actually like these to be a little closer together because I think that those areas where the snow it runs down the side of the mountain, actually a little thinner. Um, and there's quite a bit of shading that we could do up here on the top of the mountain and right over here on this smaller lower peak. And 
just darken in the line, the tree line here. And I'm gonna start to just fill in the details. Now that we've got our basic shapes, everything is about filling in the details. We can come over here and fill in some of the shading on the orange. All of the oranges have a nice similar kind of shading and you make that darker to lighter on the inside of the orange. And then I would also fill in some texture on the orange grove too. And then you might start to just shade in the tree line. We give it some, some distance from the orange grove. You can keep working on your drawing, getting more and more detailed. Um, and I'm gonna pull in one that I have finished here. And you can see that I've taken some time to make a nice contrast here at the line um, for the orange grove and made our tree, our orange tree here, very dark um, and shaded in the oranges. And I also drew in the frame with pen. I like that nice dark frame. I think it really helps give the drawing some contrast. If you're gonna mail this pencil, this graphite drawing, you might wanna think about putting on some fixative here. Um, they sell fixative in art stores. I would caution you against using hairspray that will turn your drawing brown after a while. I don't personally feel very fussed about it. I know that in the in the mail, my drawing is gonna get sorted and it's probably gonna get some mail marks across the bottom. I think that's all a part of having a piece sent through the mail. Another option, um, if you are at this point with your drawing, is to think about putting in some color. I'm really inspired by the colors that were in this um, postcard. There are these, you know, very bright, but also um, muted colors. So I, I made the oranges very bright and our foreground of the orange grove very bright. And I got muted as we got farther back, except for this bright blue sky. You could make all kinds of postcards. Um, I made this abstract postcard and I'm gonna mail this as well. So you don't have to do anything that is quite so um, figurative as our California anomaly. And you can make something abstract as well. The important thing to remember when you're making your postcard is to make it a postcard by putting a stamp on it on the right upper right hand side, filling in the address here, and writing a note to whoever you're sending to. And you can get stamps from the post office online. They come in all sorts of fun types. So I hope that you have enjoyed making postcards with us today. Share your postcard with us on social media using the hashtag MetSketch. And we'll see you back here in another two weeks for another drop in drawing.